Story 94 of Household Tales. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry, Johnson City, Tennessee. Household Tales by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. Translated by Margaret Hunt. The Peasant's Wise Daughter. There once was a poor peasant who had no land but only a small house and one daughter. Then, said the daughter, we ought to ask our lord the king for a bit of newly cleared land. When the king heard of their poverty, he presented them with a piece of land, which she and her father dug up, and intended to sow with a little corn and grain of that kind. When they had dug nearly the whole of the field, they found in the earth a mortar made of pure gold. Listen, said the father to the girl, as our lord the king has been so gracious and presented us with the field, we ought to give him this mortar in return for it. The daughter, however, would not consent to this, and said, Father, if we have the mortar without having the pestle as well, we shall have to get the pestle, so you had much better say nothing about it. He would, however, not obey her, but took the mortar and carried it to the king said that he had found it in the cleared land, and asked if he would accept it as a present. The king took the mortar and asked if he had found nothing besides that? No, answered the countryman. Then the king said that he must now bring him the pestle. The peasant said that they had not found that, but he might as well just have spoken to the wind. He was put in prison, and was to stay there until he produced the pestle. The servants had daily to carry him bread and water, which is what people get in prison, and they heard how the man cried out continually, Ah, if I had only but listened to my daughter! Alas, alas, if I had but listened to my daughter, and would neither eat nor drink! So he commanded the servants to bring the prisoner before him, and then the king asked the peasant why he was always crying. Ah, if I had but listened to my daughter, and what it was that his daughter had said, she told me that I ought to not take the mortar to you, for I should have to produce the pestle as well. If you have a daughter who is as wise as that, let her come here. She was therefore obliged to appear before the king, who asked if she really was so wise, and said he would set her a riddle, and if she could guess that, he would marry her. She at once said yes, she would guess it. Then said the king, Come to me not clothed, not naked, not riding, not walking, not in the road, not out of the road, and if thou canst do that, I will marry thee. So she went away, put off everything she had on, and then she was not clothed, and took a great fishing net, and seated herself in it, and wrapped it entirely round and round her, so that she was not naked. And she hired an ass, and tied the fisherman's net to its tail, so that it was forced to drag her along, and that was neither riding nor walking. The ass had to drag her in the ruts, so that she only touched the ground with her great toe, and that was neither being in the road nor out of the road. And when she arrived in that fashion, the king said she had guessed the riddle and fulfilled all the conditions. Then he ordered her father to be released from the prison, took her to wife and gave into her care all the royal possessions. Now, when some years had passed, the king was once drawing up his troops on parade, when it happened that some peasants, who had been selling wood, stopped with their wagons before the palace. Some of them had oxen yoked to them, and some horses. There was one peasant who had three horses, one of which was delivered of a young foal, and it ran away and lay down between two oxen, which were in front of the wagon. 
When the peasants came together, they began to dispute, to beat each other and make a disturbance. And the peasant with the oxen wanted to keep the foal, and said one of the oxen had given birth to it, and the other said his horse had had it, and that it was his. The quarrel came before the king, and he gave the verdict that the foal should stay where it had been found. And so the peasant with the oxen, to whom it did not belong, got it. Then the other went away, and wept and lamented over his foal. Now he had heard how gracious his lady the queen was, because she herself had sprung from poor peasant folks. So he went to her and begged her to see if she could not help him to get his foal back again. She said, Yes, yes, I will tell you what to do. If thou wilt promise not to betray me, early tomorrow morning when the king parades the guard, place thyself in the middle of the road by which he must pass. Take a great fishing net and pretend to be fishing. Go on fishing too, and empty out the net as if thou hast got it full. And then she told him also what he was to say if he was questioned by the king. The next day, therefore, the peasant stood there and fished on dry ground. When the king passed by and saw that, sent his messenger to ask what the stupid man was about. He answered, I am fishing. The messenger asked how he could fish where there was no water there. The peasant said, It's easy for me to fish on dry land, as it is for an ox to have a foal. The messenger went back and took the answer to the king, who ordered the peasant to be brought to him and told him, this was not his own idea, and he wanted to know whose it was. The peasant must confess this at once. The peasant, however, would not do so, and said always, God forbid he should. The idea was his own. They laid him, however, on a heap of straw, and beat him and tormented him so long that at last he admitted that he had got the idea from the queen. When the king reached home again and said to his wife, why hast thou behaved so falsely to me? I will not have thee any longer for a wife. Thy time is up. Go back to the place where whence thou camest to thy peasant's hut. One favor, however, he granted her. She might take with her one thing that was dearest and best in her eyes, and thus was she dismissed. She said, Yes, my dear husband, if you command this, I will do it. And she embraced him and kissed him, and said she would take leave of him. Then she ordered a powerful sleeping draught to be brought, to drink farewell to him. The king took a long draught, but she took only a little. He soon fell into a deep sleep, and when she perceived that, she called a servant and took a fair white linen cloth and wrapped the king in it and the servant was forced to carry him into a carriage that stood before the door, and she drove with him to her own little house. She laid him in her own little bed. He slept one day and one night without awakening, and when he awoke he looked round and said, Good God, where am I? He called his attendants, but none of them were there. At length his wife came to his bedside and said, My dear lord and king, you told me, I might bring away with me from the palace that which was dearest and most precious in my eyes. I have nothing more precious and dear than yourself, so I have brought you with me. Tears rose to the king's eyes. He said, Dear wife, thou shalt be mine, and I will be thine. And he took her back with him to the royal palace, and was married again to her and at the present time they are very likely still living. End of story 94